Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another fragrance review. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate the support that you have given me and my channel. It means the world to me. Today I have the pleasure of talking about a fragrance by the company Etat Libre d'Orange and I have reviewed an Etat Libre d'Orange fragrance on my channel before. That one is called Fit de Dieu Duris et de Sagrum. Well here we have another one with a really long and complicated French name so I do apologize for my mispronunciation. This this one is called Me Parasai Un Ombre Herman a Mescots. I know I mispronounced something there, so my apologies, my sincerest apologies. Before I get into the review, I just want to mention that this uh, bottle, I received it from Euro Perfumes. I'm going to leave all of their information down below. They have a lot of really hard to find niche fragrances and um, they're located right here in Inglewood, New Jersey, which is super convenient for me because it comes to my house like this. I live in Jersey City, so I get it very, very quickly. Now, I really like Etat Libre d'Orange. Um, it's one of my, I would say it's one of my favorite niche companies and that's because we have the likes of perfumers like Antoine Lee, Antoine Mason Dieu who have also done fragrances for Comme des Garçons and they really know how to push the envelopes in creating fragrances that are really sort of artistic and they're very creative representations and uh, this one I think is no exception. Now this name, it is a French name but it comes from a very famous poem by Victor Hugo and this line in particular translates to by my side Herman seemed like a shadow. And I think this is a comment on how fragrances can really have an ethereal nature about them and how even in the darkness of the forest, ombre, even in the darkest of the woods in the forest, there is still a shadow that is lingering, a shadow that is attached to you. That shadow could be a literal shadow, it could be your soul, it could be your conscience, it could be your ego, it could even be your perfume. And I think they did a really wonderful job in terms of the composition and what it's able to evoke in regards to the theme and what they were trying to convey. So I'm so excited to talk to you guys a little bit more about this 2015 release. Let's go ahead and start things off by taking a look at the presentation. Now I do apologize. I don't have the box for this one because this is a tester, but here's the presentation. You have the name of the fragrance here, name of the company down here at the bottom. The name of the company is also embossed into the bottle on the back. It's also engraved into the top of the cap. The cap does click into place. You could pick it up from the cap if you wanted to. And you also have a sticker at the bottom with your information. Distribution on this one, I love the sprayer. You can actually control how much you want to spray. So you can spray it hard, you can spray it lightly. And that was the presentation. Now, when you spray this on for the first time, the first note that's really going to hit your nostrils is the note of pepper. Now, um, listed as a note in this one is pepper wood. Um, it does have a woodsy nuance to it, and um, I can't really say it smells like cedar wood or sandalwood or pepper wood. It just smells peppery to me. And uh, I think this is really, really well done. I know Poivre Samarkand is a fragrance by Hermes that has a strong note of pepper. There's there's also one by, um, geez, it's called Poivre Electrique, it's by Talier Cologne. That one is really well done too. Even Le Labo has a fragrance called Poivre 23. This one is among the best and I say that um, owning uh, two of the other fragrances and this one is really, really good. Uh, there's also this note of Ambroxan in there and I think that's why I've actually received a few compliments from this fragrance. My wife, uh, for one, really likes this fragrance. Ambroxan is a sort of synthetic version of ambergris, which has a sort of regal, staticky undertone. It has like a staticky olfactory texture, and it just smells very clean. There's also a note of musk in here. So if you want a frame of reference in regards to what a musky Ambroxan-based fragrance smells like, think Dior Sauvage. But now think that a little bit peppery, and this is really interesting. Um, it's a really different scent in terms of when you first spray it, I guess the peppery nuance kind of gives off the impression that this is going to be a harsh composition, but then it settles into that warm, musky, and broxen base, and you're like, wow, this is a really generous, accommodating fragrance. It's a really beautiful fragrance. It's very well done, very masterfully and very artfully composed. Um, it takes a lot of skill, I think, to create this sort of unison, this relationship, this discourse between those two, what may be discordant 
ingredients and allowing them to work together so well and in such harmony. I think this is such a great scent. This is one of my favorite pepper-based fragrances. So if you are a fan of pepper, I know a lot of people are. Uh, there's also Piper Nigrum by uh, Lorenzo Villoresi. Unfortunately, that one has a lot of clove, so that might turn a lot of people off. You guys have to try this one. If you're looking for something dark, something brooding and mysterious, uh, something that smells like what a shadow would smell like. Just imagine that. How cool is that? Uh, I think you will certainly be into this scent. And Atali Berdurange has been making some really wonderful fragrances in the um, past few years. So guys, let's go ahead and finish things off by taking a look at my rating. So first up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell. And even though I threw in some other frames of reference in there, um, this is completely unique and separate and distinct of those other fragrances. It doesn't smell like Poivre Samarkand or Poivre Electrique or Poivre 23 or Piper Negrum. It's a completely different scent. And I think that's because it's not overly peppery. So it's not um, hyperbolic in that sense. It's not expected or cliche. It's not an exaggerated pepper note. And the Abroxin really serves to subdue that harshness that you get in the opening, which seems like it's going to linger the way a shadow would linger, but then it quickly subsides and etherealizes and it becomes something very addictive of a scent. Let's comment on the longevity. The longevity, um, I think, is within the concentration, so it's eau de parfum, six to eight hours is expected. You're gonna get about seven. So um, it performs uh, what is expected of the concentration. Projection on this one is really good for the first hour. Um, and I think that's because those more volatile top notes are really jumping up and off your skin and they're really making this fragrance notable, noticeable. And then it settles down into that musky and broxen base with some other woodsy nuances. And it's seriously masculine. Um, it's incredibly addictive. I, I, I personally think it's unisex, but uh, I, I can see the masculine quality in it. Um, versatility on this one, really good. Dressed up, dressed down, it's a different scent. It's a very nice artistic representation of Victor Hugo's poem. Um, I think this one would really shine in all weather, um, not just in the winter uh, because of the compositional nature, but because of the performance and that it's not overbearing. I think you can pull this one off in the hotter weather as well. I think anybody of any age, anybody of any sex can wear this. And lastly, in terms of presentation, um, I think the presentation on this one is really interesting. I like how sometimes they change up the design and I like that with Itali Berdurange, they don't name their fragrances Frangipani and whatever, or Rose and Musk. I like that they come up with these creative names to really show you and convince you and prove to you that perfume can be art. All you need to do is take one whiff of Secretions Magnifique and you'll know that they do fragrances quite differently. If I were to give this fragrance an overall score, I would give it a four out of five stars. And that is a very high score for me. The reason I give this a four out of five stars is because even though I love the balance of the different ingredients, I kind of wish there was something else in there that really offset the other ingredients, something that would make it quite memorable. I think it's a very uh, accommodating fragrance. It has universal appeal. It's a super artistic composition, but I would have appreciated if there were something just really random, something really different in there that will make it stand out, make it memorable. And I think they've been able to do that with uh, Feed the Dew with the note of Shiso. I think they've been able to do that with Secretion Magnifique with that metallic note. And this one, it just smells super pleasant, which is great. And I think a lot of people are going to love it for that. Um, but that's just my personal take on it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, make sure to check out Euro Perfumes. I'm going to leave their information down below. That's where I got this fragrance and uh, shipping was super fast, reasonable prices and a really large variety of niche fragrances. If you own or have tried this scent or any scent by the company Etat Liber Durange, uh, which translates to the free orange state, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a lot of other fragrance related content. So remember, I smell well so you can smell good and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.